In this ever changing age, businesses rely heavily on technologies to deliver their products and services. But what happens when things go wrong? How do businesses ensure their IT services are running smoothly and meeting the needs of their customers? And that's where ITIL comes in. ITIL or the Information Technology Infrastructure Library is a framework that helps businesses manage their IT services and improve their overall efficiency. ITIL can help you in your job aspirations to become an IT manager or an IT specialist. Did you know the national average salary of an information technology specialist is $55,000 in United States? Well, then why wait? In this video, we will be taking a closer look at ITIL and exploring the key concepts and principles that makes it a valuable tool for businesses worldwide. But before we begin, let me take you through Simply Learn's ITIL4 Foundation Certification Training Course. This ITIL certification introduces learner to ITIL4 B4 certification, the newest version of ITIL4 exam to understand and improve an IT-enabled enterprise. The ITIL4 certification training will help you understand the concepts, language, best practices and processes utilized in the ITIL4 lifecycle. This ITIL4 foundation provides you with a firm understanding of the ITIL4 framework, core concepts and terminologies of the ITIL4 service lifecycle. By the end of this ITIL certification, you will understand how ITIL4 evolved to adopt modern technologies and operational pro processes and the necessary concepts in the service management framework. The ITIL certification training is a requirement for people who want to understand the concepts of ITIL frameworks and enhance the quality of IT service management. The ITIL certified professionals can earn up to 40% more than their non-certified peers from companies like Adobe, Amazon, Barclays and Accenture, etc. To learn more about this course, you can click the link in the description box below. ITIL or Information Technology Infrastructure Library is a framework for IT service management, ITSM, that aligns IT services with the business's needs. ITIL service management provides a set of best practices and techniques for selecting, planning, delivering, and maintaining IT services within a business that aligns the IT department's actions and expenses with changing business demands. Some of the benefits of ITIL include lower costs, high quality of IT services, increased business productivity, improved return on investment, ROI, greater customer satisfaction, and improved resource utilization. The ITIL service lifecycle can be divided into five stages, service strategy, service design, service transition, service operations, and continual service improvement. All in all, ITIL provides a holistic approach to service management and enables businesses to collaborate with the IT team to deliver IT services to stakeholders. So now let's answer the question, why is ITIL so important? So now let's understand this better by taking into consideration a conversation. Here we have two friends, John and Jim, talking to each other about ITIL. So Jim asks how we can opt for a holistic approach in the IT industry. By this, he means that instead of taking each of the components in the IT industry separately, how can he take them as a whole or how can we see it as a whole? That's when John says that earlier it was difficult, but now it isn't. All of that was possible with the help of ITIL. With it, businesses could collaborate with the IT team so that they could deliver IT services to the stakeholders. Jim is really interested and wants to know more about the benefits of ITIL. So some of the benefits of ITIL are reduced IT costs, enhanced IT services, improved productivity, improved return on investment, improved customer satisfaction, better management of business risk and service disruption, and improved resource utilization. Now, we're going to talk about what exactly ITIL is. ITIL stands for Information Technology Infrastructure Library. It helps all organizations to deliver IT services using the most efficient methods. 
It helps businesses to improve service levels and reduce the cost of IT operations. Now here service levels has a different meaning. It basically focuses on how an organization maintains IT services for customers as well as it controls various activities involved in a process. Activities like planning, designing, delivering, deploying and managing services. Now the main goal of ITIL is to improve efficiency and achieve predictable service delivery. At the same time, a major requirement is to achieve high service quality. Now let's talk about the history of ITIL. ITIL's first version was introduced in 1989 to standardize IT service management. To provide for a uniform structure for service delivery, ITIL's second version was introduced in 2001. In 2007, ITIL's third version was introduced. Now this aimed to improve ITIL's service lifecycle by introducing a new feature of feedback looping. Aiming to clarify the processes of ITIL's third version, a new version of ITIL v3 was upgraded and released in 2011. In 2019, ITIL's fourth version was introduced. It provided a flexible as well as integrated system for the effective management of IT-enabled services. Why has ITIL become so popular these days? Large, medium and small organizations across the world use ITIL in order to improve the value of their services. But how can ITIL improve an organization's performance? With ITIL, an organization doesn't just save money but also works more effectively. It also has more benefits that are reduced IT cost, enhanced IT services, improved productivity, better management of business risk and service disruption, improved customer satisfaction by delivering efficient services and provides guidance to address service management challenges. That's great! Which is the latest ITIL framework and what's new about it? ITIL 4 is the latest update. ITIL has evolved from many years and ITIL 4 is the latest version and this was released in February 2019. It focuses on practical approach on how to manage the core principles of quality services, how to implement ITIL from large to small organizations and how ITIL can be utilized with frameworks such as Agile, Lean and DevOps. Now, what is in it for us to learn and understand from ITIL 4 tutorial? So, as part of this tutorial, we are going to now look at what is ITIL 4, elements of the ITIL 4 framework that is four dimensions and ITIL service value chain and its components, then details about ITIL 4 certifications and companies using ITIL. So, what is ITIL? ITIL is set of framework of IT service management that helps in aligning IT services with the requirements of the business. So it helps organizations to deliver IT services using the most efficient method. So ITIL goal is to improve efficiency and achieve predictable service delivery. So finally what it means for us when we say IT service management, information technology service management. So ITSM stands for information technology service management where it focuses on how an organization maintains IT services for customers. Also, it controls various activities involved in the process. Activities like planning, designing, delivering, deploying and managing services. ITF4 emphasizes the importance of value creation rather than just delivering services. This involves value. Always as Lean mentioned repeatedly, value should be always in customer perspective. So there should be an outcome. Generally, we use the term called output for the products or services which are created. But by using that product or services, one has to have realization of the value created by it. So that request to have certain outcomes. We are not speaking about just the features and function of a specific product or services. We are speaking about how the customer is benefited from that features and functionality which helps customer or consumers to realize the value. Then creation of a value should be always with collaboration and cooperation. So ITL4 more emphasizes on co-creation of value. So this also involves managing specific cost and risk. When we say managing specific cost and risk, it's about service provider to own the cost and risk and this cost and risk is not for the consumer or customer. So value must be clearly defined as the purpose of an organization. It is to create value for its stakeholders whereas outcome is a result of service. They are specific and help you know whether you have reached your goal. So now 
to understand the outcome of an output let us understand this example an output of wedding photography is the photo album but the outcome is the satisfaction that is experienced by the client when looking at the album if album is an output in the first case you can see the photos are not clear means poor customer experience that would be the outcome similarly the album output where it is very clear the experience of the customer will be very good so that is an outcome so finally co-creation of value in order to deliver the high quality output the service provider should maintain an interactive relationship with its stakeholders and customers it's very essential to interact understand the perspective view of the stakeholders and create the value accordingly for example co-creation is a business strategy which helps consumer receives the results based on their requirements if you take up this scenario of a restaurant where service providers provides certain dish versus service provider provides certain uh, facilities uh, to the consumers of the food in the restaurant so that they will have a better experience and feedback can be provided then and there itself so this helps the restaurant personnel to work on those feedbacks and improve the service experience to the customers the amount of money spent on specific activity or resources should be managed wisely and as i mentioned earlier cost and risk of any services provided by a service provider is with service provider consumer of a service just pays for a service and then as the service consumption is complete they will just offboard themselves like you go and book a taxi you get onboarded to taxi and then you get off the taxi as you reach your destination you will not own the vehicle you are not owning that car you are not owning that any mobile app if you have used to book the taxi all the cost and risk associated with these service components would be for service provider another example can be starbucks has offered internet access to its customers which means all the associated components with the starbucks internet services the cost and risk associated with that is owned by starbucks now what is itil4 so itil4 how to identify whether a service is delivering value to customer and meeting their requirements solution this can be identified by evaluating the utility and warranty now it is very essential to understand what is utility and warranty for us so utility refers to the functionality offered by product in order to meet a specific requirement for example utility of a training service is about the timings of the service the content delivered during the services the profile of the trainer etc whereas Email services if you take an example utility is all those parameters features functionalities associated with the email services like mailbox capacity or the way the speed of emails sending or receiving etc now similarly warranty refers to the customer with certain assurance of the products like service availability information security service capacity and service continuity so these four service availability information security or service capacity and service continuity has to ensure the specific provided services is having those solutions which will safeguard these requirements of the services and service will become fit for use if i take a similar example of email services which, which we discussed just now so warranty is about availability of email services how safe is my message when i send and receive the messages means information security capacity do i have a sufficient capacity so that all the emails can be stored and then continuity what happens if something goes wrong drastically some failure happens minimum services should be up and running so that my messaging services is on for at least minimum need of the messaging requirements that is about warranty so utility refers to fit for purpose basically referring to features functionality of the service whereas warranty refers to these four things availability security capacity and continuity making a specific services fit for use so elements of itl4 so here we are going to look at understanding two main elements defined in itl4 that is four dimensions and itil service value system so let us look at four dimensions of services so the four dimensions of services involves organizations and people informations and technology partners and suppliers and value streams and processes always it is required to look at a service having a holistic picture so having this holistic picture required correct understanding about these four dimensions of services so when i say organizations and people when i say information and technology partners and suppliers values and value streams and processes so all these four dimensions will be definitely involved and required to look at for every services so let us understand these one by one 
now organization people refers to the organization structure the culture the people the principles the values around revolving around the people and organization structure which makes for providing better outcomes for creating better outcomes for the services similarly information and technology involves information and knowledge which is required along with the technology to provide a required services and service management the partners and suppliers focuses on those stakeholders who supply certain services for a service provider so that service provider can provide the better services to their consumers of the services value streams and processes refers to the series of steps organization takes to create deliver the products throughout the service life cycle of a services now to take an example if i assume a services like taxi services which i defined earlier we discussed earlier who is organization of people the people sitting in the customer care the people uh, like drivers the people sitting in the business people sitting in the finance people sitting in the technology so all these form certain organization structure having people in it so that fulfills organization people dimension of services whereas information and technology like car itself is a technology device information about the schedule or information about the driver similarly the technology platform the mobile app what you use uh, can be the one which you can visualize for information and technology for partners and suppliers now generally if you look at uh, the examples like ola or uber services taxi services they are not employed by the ola or uber they are the partners and suppliers for providing the taxi services to ola on uber on behalf of ola and uber so similarly internet services will be provided to ola and uber by a supplier so partners and suppliers involvement is essential in any services the value streams and processes now when you actually open a mobile app and book a taxi you need a process which has to be established and defined and this process would connect to the trigger or to check what vehicles are available and book a vehicle for you allocate a vehicle for the specific consumer similarly that uh, process triggering to billing system likewise many processes are connected with each other forming a value stream to achieve a specific objective of a consumer and this involves many processes so considering these four dimensions every services has these four dimensions and consideration of these four dimensions are essential while strategizing a services designing a services transitioning a services delivering a services supporting a services throughout the life cycle of the services so all these four dimensions are impacted by an external factors six external factors so these six external factors can also be called as pastel factors which is basically political factor economic factors social factors technological factors legal factors and environmental factors so further each dimension as i mentioned is affected by multiple factors and we saw that and next let us look at itil service value system so this forms the core part of itil framework so this shows an end to end view about what is involved in service value system so it starts with opportunity demand which is shown in the left side and every services creating the value and continually improve to align and create the value so when i say opportunities and demand so which becomes a reason for triggering an actions and activities and move from left to right similarly as it moves from left to right the value is created opportunity the term opportunity refers to the needs requirements of customers or consumers which is realized by service provider to fulfill whereas demand represents the requirement for products and services from the customers so either opportunity realized by service provider which is unfulfilled need of consumers or customers whereas demand where customer or consumer is asking and booking those products or services from you would create certain actions with the service provider organizations so ultimately it should result in creation of those product or services with the specific features and functions so those would enable the creation of value and also that value represents a valuable outcome now the components of service value system as we saw guiding principles is one of that which help in providing a comprehensive vision of how an organization should manage a service so there are seven principles so that is focus on value start where you are think and work holistically progress iteratively with feedback keep it simple and practical collaborate and promote visibility 
and optimize and automate so when we say focus on value which means everything we do as part of services so every task an organization does should create value for stakeholders especially it should encourage to focus on user experience and give better consumers experience so that there be, can be continuity continually the value is realized by the consumer or customers next principle start where you are refers to ensuring that organization assess and analyze the scenarios to identify and improve things on a continual basis for example organization assessing and analyzing the existing processes to identify and improve so progress iterative and feedback this opts for a feedback during every iterations of the work always ensures to organize work into small and manageable sections which can lead to quick results collaborate and promote visibility it is very essential to collaborate with customers users suppliers and all the stakeholders who are involved in services and service actions as it helps in creating much better value think and work holistically so this creates a process that adds value to the customers or consumers and business and always helps in identification of different ways to enhance the performance of the processes because this provides the end to end view of a services keep it simple and practical it is always important to opt for minimum steps that are correct and do not add processes that create value to the stakeholders optimize and automate so optimize and automate refers to consideration of the services which needs to be optimized and automated which helps in improving the efficiency and effectiveness and also optimize the resources and costs next component of service value system is governance so when we say governance governance basically is responsible for evaluating directing and monitoring the it service management by adopting the guiding principles principles defined in ITIL 4 framework it may also does demonstrate these principles considering the currently available or the principles which are defined in the organization so this involves three main activities that is evaluate direct and monitor so evaluate refers to the performance of reviews of the services on a continual basis based on the stakeholder requirements so that how the services are performing how the new opportunities coming up would be understood and that can made visible the directions whatever is provided based on the evaluation done for the ITSM organization so that accordingly the required directions can be accomplished when i say direction for example organization can have a directions to enhance the business opportunities when as a business opportunities increase the sales by 25% in coming quarter when organization says this now in what way it service management can contribute to that in what way the readiness of it service management should be when organization enhances its business to 25% should we optimize something with us or should we increase certain set of resources and capabilities so that increase of the business to 25% is actually supported or complemented by it service management then as you implement that as this direction is set whether itsm is contributing to that has to be checked monitored so it has to monitor the performance of the organization and has to check whether the practices the products the services are they aligned are they aligned are they in line with the direction given by the governing body it is very essential to understand this and have this in practice so that services always continue to be aligned with the service uh, organizations business requirements and also the organizations or consumers who are using the services of a service provider so it aligns to that as well so evaluate direct and monitor as happens continually regularly so that continued alignment of direction to the uh, set direction by the governing body is ensured so next component is service value chain which is basically a component which is which is in the middle of a service value system so this will have a set of interconnected activities that an organization performs to deliver a valuable product or services to its consumers so this will have many activities like engage plan improve design and transition obtain and build uh, deliver and support product and services now as you see in the left side you have a demand right side you have a value now the demand which is represented in the left side you don't see opportunities as it was mentioned in 
the service value system framework. In the left side, we had demand and opportunity in that picture, but here we don't see that. The simple reason here, in a service value chain, being part of service value system, it is always demand. When we refer to opportunities in service value system, the moment it is realized there is an opportunity, the discussion happens based on that and decision happens. As the decisions happen, now it is required to fulfill that demand by a service providing organization. That is the reason we don't see the word opportunity here. So as the demand is seen, now the engagement happens. Now how the engagement happens? So here it involves first planning. So planning refers to the activities involving creating plans, portfolios, architectures, policies, etc., which provides an organization a direction, a clarity in terms of what to do. To learn more about this course, you can click the link in the description box below. If you refer to previous version of ITL like ITL V3, you can think about a service strategy part of the actions which you used to take, like understanding the perspective of services, planning for the services, understanding service requirements, service level requirements, right? So which will enable to get the clarity in terms of the detail about the services and what are those results which are required to be established. So now people would contribute to these active activities and must have great analytical and management skills. There should be clear visualization about the services end to end like the principle we said having a holistic approach so unless i have a holistic picture a bird's eye view i cannot understand what services is being delivered and what is that value it is going to be created so this full picture of services end to end has to be visualized that is the reason plan is on the top like an umbrella so one has to understand that very clearly so as you get the insight towards that particular service service requirements service level requirements once the plan is ready then you will move forward with engage so you engage with the right set of stakeholders. Now why should we engage with the stakeholders? Engaging with stakeholders requires clear focus on understanding the requirements as needed by the consumers. We may require to document this. We may require to understand what is that people need skills and competency right in terms of engaging and we need to know and demonstrate that so while you understand and get a good understanding about the needs of the stakeholders stakeholders may be like end user who are using the services customers who are discussing straight who are giving the requirements whereas the suppliers who is also asking about the requirements in terms of provisioning their services to the service provider so the engagement should go on with all those stakeholders to understand clearly and also set the expectation clearly to those stakeholders so you may require to set an expectation to consumers you may require to set an expectation to suppliers you may require to set an expectation to users and this has to continue throughout so continually engaging with all the stakeholders throughout the service value system and it's very rigorous as part of service value chain so next activity would be design and transition so design and transition focuses on creating and releasing new and change services now when we say designing a new services if we, if we recall the points which what we had in idle v3 like four p's we used to discuss which we just saw like four dimensions so people process products and partners which is aligned to four dimensions thought which we just saw in the previous slides so that is very essential to visualize and defining service solution defining technology architectures defining processes defining metrics defining measurement methods and tools to measure that particular service and service performance so this requires understanding and having those individuals who have comprehensive understanding about service management and they should contribute to this entire exercise of design and transitioning so unless you have that holistic picture what we are mentioning while planning and also while engaging to get the clarity so designing would not provide you that blueprint required service design package we call it as which we use this term in idle v3 perspective but however the terminology would not change the blueprint the service design package what you have for a service it is very necessary to have that in place with the detailed considerations of all the four dimensions of the services and also considering the impact of the pestle factors so further obtain and build so obtain and build focuses on development and management of the infrastructure and applications so you obtain means you acquire resources you acquire components infrastructure components like servers storage database or application platforms the testing platforms you acquire you test those you make it ready you set up that environment required for 
creation of a services transition of a services you obtain and build then further you deliver and support this requires to ensure that services are delivered and supported in a way that meets stakeholders expectations so as you engage on a continual basis there is a collaboration which is going on throughout and also like progress iteratively with feedback you need to take that approach so that you will have a feedback so by doing this you are demonstrating all the seven principles right so services provisioning is one part of it new services provisioning or modifying the existing services to enhance the performance of the existing services with added features and functionality is one thought similarly while there is an incident while there is a disruption while there is a failure it is required to resolve those even in that scenario one has to understand what are the impacts to the services what are the impacts to the business and handle accordingly and this is true for while introducing a new services and while resolving the incidents or issues associated with the specific services which are up and running so when it is happening with the better collaboration with the customers consumers suppliers every stakeholders obviously will involve actively and they contribute as well as realize the value it is very important that people contributing to this activity and need to be very good at prioritizing and managing complex workloads so services such as resolving incidents monitoring applications and infrastructure generating reports all these are the actions which happens as part of deliver and support now improve every services every service components every processes every individuals has to be improved so the focus on software development and management of cloud infrastructure and third party services which happens as part of service value chain this we can term it as an example where you, your improvement can be focused on now when i say improve improvement at all levels you can think of improvement at a component level improvement at a integration level improvement at a service level improvement at contribution to the business level so as you go on each of these levels it is quite obvious that you need to measure the performances at each of these levels so as you measure the performances at each of these level it provides you certain insight is the performance is according to what is required what is planned or is the services is there a deviation from the required performance in either of the scenarios it is very essential to check and see if there is any opportunity for improvement if things are if things are going as planned then it's okay so you need to identify the opportunities to improve further from that level that would become baseline if things are not happening the way it is planned obviously that corrections are required again the improvement thought comes in so every services at any given point in time one has to keep seeking the opportunities for improvement and keep improving that comes through feedback what you get on a continual basis from the consumers and users next component is practices so there are around 34 practices management practices which are designed to accomplish the specific objectives of a services now when i say 34 practices earlier we used to have called uh, processes which we used to say processes and functions in itl v3 framework so itl v3 had defined 26 processes and then uh, five life cycle stages and also uh, four functions now here in itl4 realizing that not a uh, specific process is dedicated or uh, associated with only one life cycle stage each of those processes has so much of complexity it cannot just called as a process and it has to be called as a practice because of the complexity in transactions involved for example if i take incident management we used to call it as a process and we need to use to look at that as a process as part of service operation now incident management process as part of service operation fine but what are the amount of activities it involves what is the complexity of it it is it goes across the various different functions so looking at this scenario where this process goes across various functions to get a result now you think of a scenario where i need to resolve incident by doing certain changes now i trigger a change management now if you look at the entire framework of itil v3 change management is actually defined in service transition life cycle stage now but in operations you have incident management whereas change management is in transition so is that service moving back to the uh, previous life cycle stage that was the confusion so instead of that if you say there is an incident management practice which is applicable irrespective of the stage of that particular service change control which is applicable across the life cycle irrespective of the scenario the service li uh, services is into so then you are not bound to any specific life cycle stage so while incident occurs straight away you go and uh, take the help of uh, change control and then implement the required changes and then 
close the incidents so this does not have any specific attachment or tying between a specific stage of the service life cycle so if you can able to recall and visualize vital v3 defined about five life cycle stages first stage was service strategy having five processes service design having eight processes service transition having seven processes service operation having five processes and continual service improvement having around one process aligned with csa model continual service improvement model now each of this process like sla service level agreement which you which is there in service design stage so this is discussed in strategy as well and this service levels has to be monitored and managed during the service operations and services has to be uh, created and transitioned uh, aligning with the service levels defined in design so this is what the thought was but the existence of that service level sla service process what we used to call was there universally across the life cycle initially to define next to transition next to monitor and manage so it was there so sir, the process gets triggered some point in time but it is there throughout now in ITIL 4, this particular practice is not bound to a specific life cycle stage. So whenever it is required, it is triggered. And each of these practices are interconnected certain way. If I take another example, uh, like information security management. So this is also important throughout the life cycle. And very interesting part here is information security management practice is the one which is not just for a service provided by service provider alone. The practice of information security should be practiced across the organization service providers organization so that better information security can be provided to all the services provided by a service provider so keeping this in mind the 34 practices are grouped into three major categories general management practice service management practice and technical management practices when i say general management practice so these general management practices which are around 14 practices are applicable across the organization right the general management practices are applicable across the organization and this is not bound to any specific services for example change transformation right so if you have a major change which you used to call in uh, itil v3 so that required certain amount of time to move the organization thought the culture everything towards certain uh, level so that the change can become successful across the organization similarly information security management which i just mentioned so many practices which are not just associated with one service can be generally applicable across the organization so 14 general management practices are defined so similarly that 14 general management practices includes information security management relationship management strategic management portfolio management when i say portfolio it is a portfolio of the organization not just about one service so architecture management and enterprise architecture what we're speaking about and service financial management overall for all the services workforce and talent management continual improvement continual improvement of all the services to suit the business requirement to align and complement to the business measurement and reporting as a whole risk management knowledge management organizational change management which i just mentioned and explained in, in terms of having organizational transformation project management supplier management so when i say information security management to reiterate on so this has to focus on ensuring the safeguarding confidentiality integrity and availability of information and information asset of organization so only then all that activities i do as part of this organization will be under the umbrella of information security focus so all that i do in this organization so i need to ensure the information security is taken care people moving from uh, entry gate to my data center so can i define that as part of data center services no i have a data center facility but someone entering the premises everyone who comes into my premises need not go to data center but they move around the data center it's quite obvious i need to safeguard someone should not tailgate without anybody's knowledge i need to set the controls at organization level so people who are not authorized will not move towards data center so the next level of security and enablement can happen exclusively for data center so that is again that is aligned with the framework of information security for the organization so it is very essential to consider these practice at the organization level rather than just at a service level the moment i focus at organization level so all the applicable services will also get initiated and implemented implementation of that particular practice for that uh, application of that particular service as well similarly if you look at relationship management so when i say relationship at the broader perspective relationship happens with two 
entities to organizations to individuals to to organization to enterprises so it is of that size it is not about one individual have a relationship with another individual a service manager has a relationship with another manager it is not that it's about two entities service provider organization and customer organization consumers organization there should be relationship and this relationship management also you can look at in terms of having across the organization within the various different departments and function within the organization similarly relationship between a manager and subordinate relationship between colleagues relationship between suppliers and service provider relationship between service provider and customer so it's across so main purpose of this is to ensure a good relationship is maintained between organizations and its stakeholders only then that required collaboration and transactions can happen to make the business successful so keeping in this mind rest all the practices as i mentioned strategic management or portfolio management architecture management service financial management workforce and talent management continual improvement measurement and reporting risk management knowledge management organizational change management project management supplier management all these has to consider across the organization perspective organization as a whole they should look at right so only then the required practice of making people to understand about the dynamics of the services dynamics of the business can be enabled i'll take one vague example like you have a uh, we took the example of restaurant earlier now if i speak about relationship management relating to that restaurant now who has to maintain the relationship now the waiter who goes and speaks to the customer consumers who are comes to the restaurant there should be a relationship established if not a relationship which lasts for long on one on one basis it's about creation of that experience because that is one of the touch points now that is one experience what that consumer will have the moment the consumer enters the restaurant the ambience of the restaurant the people who take care of the ambience of the re restaurant if they get the right feedback in time what kind of ambience would help what is the feedback about this from the customer there is a transaction and relationship which is happening similar the billing team the people working in the kitchen versus the waiter the time they manage the information flow from them to the waiter and then to the consumers so all and taste of the food is that customers enjoying the food feedback going back to the kitchen and making necessary corrections there and fitting the need of the customers and consumers on a regular basis so understanding this relationship across so that it's quite obvious the consumer of a service will have a better experience and this is a it's not a one time job it should be there always and should continue throughout it is very essential to demonstrate this only then customer will have a better experience so likewise all these general practices generic practices should be applicable across the organization and demonstrated so that you can create a better service experience to the consumers so next is service management practices so service management practices are the one which is applicable to specific services uh, which are used for development the deployment delivery and support in the organization's environment when i say organization it may be organization of service provider organization of consumer organization of supplier so this involves around 17 practices that is it asset management monitor and event management means monitoring each of the service components and the service performance business analysis service catalog management of all the operational services service design service level management for the specific service availability management capacity and performance Performance management, service continuity management, service desk. Now remember, service desk was called as function when we were studying ITIL V3, but realizing service desk itself is a practice where all the four dimensions is applicable. So service desk is also termed as practice, and there is no word called function used in ITIL IV. So incident management, service request management. So request fulfillment was the terminology used there. Here it is service request management, problem management, release management, service validation and testing, service configuration management, change control. The seven service management practices. Now looking at one of these practices like IT asset management. So we need to understand what is IT asset. So all those assets like server, a database. an application an individual so each of these forms service asset we cannot we can also call it as configuration items so one has to manage those so those so that they are valuable asset are realized managed properly and they are performing and delivering at the level which is required to accomplish that required performance for creating a better service value to the consumers of the services so it assets are managed throughout the life cycle of that particular it asset and it is very essential to keep those it assets performance at that level so that no it assets which are not considered are not kept uh, without uh, the visibility 
of those assets in the IT service management so that they are performing at certain level, ensuring the services will be performing better and that better service performance would result in better complement or contribution to the business. Similarly, if I look at monitoring and event management, now I am monitoring the services, the performance of the service components and then their behaviors, the capacity utilized, the availability of those. So I'm monitoring those and learning the behavior of those service components, CIs. So emphasizing on generating and detecting the status of IT services, its CIs throughout the life cycle of the service. So that this will keep me clear, providing that better picture so that I will have a clarity in terms of what needs to be addressed at what point in time. So today's monitoring and event management tools, if I speak about, is so capable compared with the way it was there like 15, 20 years back. It's so capable. Today we're speaking about bringing automation to it. Already a lot of tools are automated that way, which provides predictive analysis, which would provide the required action to improve the experience of the services. So that is the capability what we are speaking today. So focusing on this monitoring and event management need of a specific service. What needs to be looked at something which is non-acceptable behavior. What is that we can term it as something which is okay. This is how the behavior should be. That needs to be understood correctly. And then whenever the deviation occurs, monitoring and event management would throw an alert. At the same time, it will also keep analyzing the trend of it and providing necessary insight towards what actions needs to be taken. So likewise, each of these practices specific to each of the services has to be looked at carefully and demonstrated. So while doing this, one should not ignore the fact that alignment to those seven principles defined. It is very essential. So next is technical management practices. So when we say technical management practices, it refers to the management of technology domains for the service management purposes by expanding or shifting their focus from technology solutions to IT services. So if I'm just looking at a server, for example, an application, for example, as an individual component. So I'm not seeing entire service as a whole, but however, my focus being on that individual IT component is also essential. I cannot ignore that part. So the technology technical management practices are of three types which includes deployment management, software development and management, infrastructure and platform management. So overall, general management practices 14, service management practices 17, and technical management practices 3. So totally 34 management practices defined in ITL4. So when I say deployment management, now as you design and transition, obtain and build to deliver, you need to deploy. Now while deploying, that deployment has to be scheduled, like release scheduling we do. So once that is scheduled, the deployment would happen at certain point in time. So deployment practice would help in terms of designing and managing and controlling the build, test and deployment of releases in order to deliver new functionality required by the business. And this is for a specific service or something which needs to be uh, transitioned or implemented as part of the service life cycle where you need a specific technical or technological actions right that are defined very clearly and those needs to be complied with similarly if we speak about uh, software development and management it would focus on enhancing the quality of software development and ensures to provide the required functionality for it services so specific practice depending on the kind of platforms which are used similarly for infrastructure and platform management a question may arise here we are speaking about the practices which are general, which are service specific, which are technical. But what about the people? Now people is also a resource. As the overall practices what we have, all these are done by people. So one has to look at having enhancing the capabilities of the individuals which are required to demonstrate all of these activities. That is definitely one important focus, which specifically it may not mention, but it is very essential to have those individuals. So various roles where it can come across, like service manager, process owner, service owner, which we used to uh, see as a designation and also roles of service management. Those individuals, those roles needs to have a specific required competencies and capabilities. Only then they can perform here as part of these practices. So next component for service value system is continual improvement. So as we say continual improvement, it's for entire service value system, which ensures that IT services continuously align to stakeholders expectations. So we just don't speak about fulfilling the expectation of stakeholders going beyond that expectation. It's very important. So meaning giving better service experience. So the 
support continual improvement at all levels itl service uh, value system includes continual improvement model which has continual improvement practice and uh, the improve service value chain activity right so when i say the itl can continual improvement model this would provide a structured approach to the organization in order to bring the required improvements on a regular basis and the word used is continual not continuous so continual in the sense we take that approach of pdca we plan do check and act on that continuous pdca then improve service value chain activities that is to establish continual improvement into service value chain right so we saw that improve in service value chain as well if you, the down uh, one in the service value chain picture then continual improvement practice which support organization in their day-to-day -day improvement efforts so this happens aligning to the CSI model which is redefined compared with the model what was defined in the previous version of ITIL so that is having seven steps like what is the vision being the first question where are we now at what stage are we now where are we now then where do we want it to be how do we achieve our goal how do we get there then once you have a plan to get there take action to get there then did we achieve our goal did we get there then keep keep the momentum going by having that feedback so this particular uh, csa model for continual improvement is aligned and followed for example if i say what is the vision of organization to become a best of service provider in the region where we are doing the business if this is the vision then are we the best service provider at this point in time you are answering that questions where are we now at what stage are we now where are we now so you are answering no we are not the best we are in the third position so then uh, next immediate action what will you take where do you want it to be so mostly you take an action in terms of identification of those gaps which needs to be addressed identification of those opportunities which needs to be taken care of so that you can move ahead in terms of reaching that position so next position will be at least uh, reach near to second one or becoming second one would be the target then how do we achieve that how do we achieve that goal how do we move forward you set up a plan for it you draft a clear plan and then take action do it then you check did we achieve our goal did we get there so if you are there excellent if you're not there work on it again based on that feedback again work based on the vision if you achieved set up a next target if you're not achieved check out what is that we did not do let us continue to do that so that we will achieve that goal so this csa model was depicted and followed in ITIL 4 framework this is the one which is uh, actually mentioned in ITIL 4 okay so next we will look at understanding the certification various different certifications level defined in ITIL 4 so now ITL 4 foundation certification is an entry level certification which offers basic knowledge of ITL key elements, core concepts and terminologies used in ITL 4. The various levels of certifications as defined in ITL 4 certification scheme is like ITL foundation is the basic level of uh, certification. There are three types of uh, modules in ITL specialist certification and two modules in ITL strategist modules. So create, deliver, support, drive stakeholder value, high velocity IT are the three ITL specialist modules. Whereas direct plan and improve, digital and IT strategy are the two strategies modules. So to accomplish ITL managing professional, one has to complete these four modules. So each of these modules, create, deliver and support, drive stakeholder value, high velocity IT, direct plan and improve are a separate examination. Similarly to accomplish the uh, certification of ITL strategic leader, one has to complete, sorry, direct plan and improve and digital and IT strategy certifications. So once this is complete, the next level is ITL master certification. So ITL 4 foundation examination format would look like this. The duration of the examination is one hour. So totally there are 40 multiple choice questions. So each right answers would carry one marks and the duration of examination is like 60 minutes. So one has to score 26 that is 65 percent for 40 questions given and there is no negative marking for wrong answers. So once you complete the foundation uh, certification one can move forward towards accomplishing the next level of certification. I will redo this slide from this slide. The companies using ITL practices. Let us look at few of the examples. So first example for us would be the case of Disney. So why Disney is using ITL? So it is one of the famous companies that has adopted ITL. 
so some of the reasons why uh, disney is using and what are those issues it had earlier so disney had was facing the issues to maintain up to date and accurate information on their applications similarly the company's management system had difficulty in identifying the right costumes for their cast members and schedule swaps when necessary it was a challenge to maintain the availability of assets for the customers so adoption of itil and disney has improved service delivery and performance 100% availability of assets improved reliability maintainability and scalability of it services then increase in customer engagement so similarly there are many organizations similar to disney has adopted itil and has seen that value realization happening to them so some more organizations similar to uh, disney's example what we saw would be datacom systems inc muller metso irs and list goes on you name the big names in the industry they have itl practiced actively in their organization so final summary as part of this uh, tutorial we looked at understanding the definitions some of the definitions of it service management we also discussed about value co creation of value outcome risk and cost associated with the services then we spoke about utility and warranty we understood why itl is the best practice framework for it service management and also we looked at itl 4 framework and its components like service value system and components of service value system like principle governance service value chain practices continual improvement opportunity demand and value and also we looked at the components of uh, service value chain like starting with the demand and having plan engage improve obtain and build design transition deliver and support and that creates products or services enabling value then also we looked at four dimensions that is pestle factors influencing four dimensions so political economical social technological legal and environmental factors and this was all for this itil full course hope you guys found it informative and helpful if you like this session then like share and subscribe if you have any question then you can drop them in the comment section below thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from simply learn Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.